Hi folks, this video is about first order counter examples. Remember how we proved that arguments are invalid in bool and prop? We gave a counter example. Well, that same general fact holds true for FOL. The counter example is still the fundamental tool for proving arguments are invalid. But with bool and prop, in order to give a counter example, all you had to do was do a truth table and find the row on which the premises are true and the conclusion false. Counter examples were easy because you could follow that mechanical procedure to always find the counterexample if the argument was invalid. FOL is more complicated because remember, the quantifiers and the identity predicate cannot be given truth tables. Those are not truth functional logical systems. Remember, that's why we needed the domain of quantification and this more complex semantics. What that means is giving a counterexample in FOL is gonna be more complicated because we have to provide the meanings of these sentences in order to know that the premise is true and the conclusion false. So let's just start at an intuitive level. Let's say you look at this sentence. I want you to interpret P and Q however you choose so that you can imagine a way the premise is true and the conclusion false. What would you try to do to try to specify for somebody the meanings of these sentences so that you know the premise could be true with the conclusion false? Do it in your own heads. Pause your videos and try to figure this out. And then we'll talk about how to do it rigorously in FOL. Okay. In, or, in order to do this rigorously, so hopefully you came up with an intuitive idea, I used the name, the predicates dog and cat, but there's many different ways of doing it. So there's not one unique counterexample here. Let's talk about what you have to do to do it rigorously. An FO, a first order interpretation, and a counterexample is a type of interpretation on which the premises are true and the conclusion false. An interpretation is just three things. It's a way of assigning meanings to the non-logical symbols, like these predicates, P and Q, or if you have any names in there, you'd have to assign what does the name A mean or P a mean, et cetera. You also need to assign some facts because these sentences are gonna be true or false depending upon the facts at hand, like how many dogs or cats there are in the animal shelter. And then finally, because there are quantifiers, remember quantifiers only make sense if we have a domain of quantification that they're ranging over. You also thirdly have to specify the domain. Here's how I did it in order to make my counterexample. I just said, let's make P, be x is a dog and q be x is a cat so th what this says is there exists a dog and there exists a cat thus there exists something that's a dog and a cat of course that that is not valid and my assignment of predicates here of meanings helps show that it's not valid but in order to truly make my premise true and my conclusion false i also need some facts about what animals are in the animal shelter or what have you so I need to actually tell you that there is some dog and there is some cat. That's what makes premise number one true. And furthermore, we know that neither any of the dogs are not cats and vice versa. So that what's, that's what makes my conclusion false. And also I'll tell you my domain of quantification just includes Socks and Rufus, these two animals and nothing else. So I've specified rigorously all three of these things which we need in order to know that the premise is true and the conclusion false. That means the argument is invalid. Now, remember we said that informal proofs are done in English. Well, specifying this interpretation really in the context of this course does demonstrate to your audience that the argument is invalid. It is nice to, to, to provide some minor amount of elaboration. So you could also do this. So this is the way to do it following our other procedure. You can just say, here's my proof by counterexample. And this is my informal proof in English. On the interpretation I've given you, so we have to specify this information, we know that Rufus is a dog and, and Sox is a cat, so my premise is actually true. But of course, we know no dogs or cats, so the conclusion is false. And that's all you need to do in order to make a counterexample. Give me an interpretation on which the premise is true and the conclusion false. Now, unlike propositional logic, unlike bool and prop, there's not a mechanical procedure for doing this. There is no shortcut for actually understanding the quantifiers and thinking using some creativity and thinking of an example on which the premise is true and the conclusion false. So that's one reason why FOL and the complex semantics of FOL make the logic more difficult and more complicated. But nonetheless, I'm convinced if you use your head, you're going to be able to figure out these sorts of counterexamples. Okay, thanks.